this session was considered. We had, we had another event, SQL Saturday, and uh, we had some funny conversation about what is happened and uh, what is possible to be presented. So finally, uh, we consider that this session will be something uh, probably interesting. From one side, I'm not sure if it is disappointment or not, but uh, DocumentDB is not implemented using .NET. <laughs> for good or for bad. I mean that uh, it is developed from scratch. Uh, of course, it is not possible to share some details under NDA, but uh, yes, it is developed uh, using mostly C, C++ from scratch. It is completely new solution, not based on already existing solutions. Uh, from another side, DocumentDB is quite fast in some situations, not in all situations. It is good also to consider this. And uh, uh, it is something that you also need to consider when you uh, think about uh, where it's possible to implement this solution. So, uh, of course, it is uh, in general presented like NoSQL document oriented database, but it is not 100% uh, pure NoSQL in the context of uh, most of other solutions. Do you have experience with NoSQL databases? Which one? MongoDB? Mongo. CoachDB? MongoDB. Mongo. Yes, mostly MongoDB. And uh, on premises or in the cloud? On premises. Because that's another story. You know that uh, uh, probably uh, those of you who write uh, MongoDB uh, in Azure, it is possible to use it on the infrastructure level. There is third-party solution, software as a service, uh, but uh, it is focused on the enterprise uh, segment and it is not, not cheap and uh, it is probably uh, convenient only for some clients. So DocumentDB is a relative already not so new solution from nearly two years from the first preview but uh, it is a solution that is designed to uh, cover the gap that we have uh, also with other NoSQL uh, document-oriented databases. We will consider a little bit later that uh, document-oriented databases are uh, probably more convenient to be used in different way, not like uh, uh, simplest uh, solutions like table storage, for example, uh, because uh, we have much more features and, of course, it is a little bit more expensive. So, uh, of course, if you have document-oriented database, it is expected that you will have JSON documents. Probably it is not something new and you already have good experience with this. Uh, well, from another side, uh, it is an uh, interesting solution where you can use both JavaScript and uh, SQL queries and it is one of the uh, most powerful features because of the uh, easy learning curve uh, from SQL Server to use uh, this solution. Initially, it was based on solid state disk with specific size. Do you know what is the size? Guys who tried, who tried uh, document DB? Well, it is 10 gigs size that is related, was related, to be correct, to the size of the collection. Well, uh, it is something that you need to consider when uh, you design these solutions because uh, uh, you need to uh, implement sharding or to use new server-side sharding if you have uh, larger databases. In general, 
DocumentDB supports up to petabytes of data, but you need to organize it in many uh, different collections or sharded collections. Uh, by default, uh, DocumentDB uh, do indexing on all options or all properties of documents. And uh, you are able to control this, to limit indexing, but by default it is for all options. Uh, well, what will be the case if we have indexing on all properties of the documents? What do you think? Size, of course, and also when you editing data or insert data, well, you need to uh, expect that indexing uh, will be updated. That means additional computing. Well, it is something that also is trade-off, of course. So, it is something that, of course, we need uh, to uh, know initially. About resources and structure, uh, it is uh, something that also has some specific things and some common things with other NoSQL databases. In general, here, database is abstraction. Container that uh, just is used on the logical level to organize set of collections. It is nothing uh, specific related to uh, your uh, implementation uh, that uh, you will provide. Just you need to organize somehow your collections on the logical level. So uh, in most of samples, we will have like here uh, some implement uh, some uh, description on the right side of these slides uh, with the part of uh, REST uh, URL because I need to mention as most of other services DocumentDB provides initially REST interface and of course different SDKs that you can use of course after out of the box now, if you need something that is not supported or if you need uh, to use it with technology where you have no SDK, of course, uh, you can uh, go on the lower level and uh, just uh, use this REST uh, interface. So that's the reason often to show uh, also how it looks like part of the REST string. After that, uh, we will see, of course, example. Here in DocumentDB, you will uh, see also something specific that uh, is uh, explained like self-link. That means the specific address uh, of uh, some resource that you need to use. It is uh, used via SDK and, of course, it has internal representation that is uh, related to the specific URL with uh, uh, this resource that we are looking for. It is possible also to add specific yes, media and uh, other resources uh, to your database and it is uh, something that also on the logical level is related to your database but in general it is totally different storage. Uh, you have specific limitation about number of users for specific database. Do you know how many users is possible to use? Can you guess? No, just five. <laughs> uh, what is the case? The case is that usually uh, you can provide authentication for the user 
that is not related to the users in database. Well, there are some internal discussions because uh, I'm included also in the insiders group of uh, document DB team. So we had discussion about this. Number of users will be uh, increased, but initial idea was that uh, actually as a software as a service, uh, this uh, uh, database will be provided with uh, uh, authentication that can be implemented on the solutions level and uh, you have different users that can be used mostly internal for different uh, uh, set of permissions how to explain and of course you have uh, permissions it is it is probably something that you can more relate to role in uh, other databases I mean that you can uh, uh, relate specific user with set of uh, permissions. So the backbone of uh, document to be is collection. Collection initially was related to the dedica uh, with the dedicated solid state disk for specific collection, and it was limited to 10 gigs. Uh, still, there is uh, implementation. Current, current implementation is with 10 gigs uh, for uh, solid state disk, but we will see a little bit later that uh, there is possibility to use server side sharding explained out of the box, so partially out of the box I can explain. So, document, of course, it is JSON document and uh, it can be more or less complex. There is a possibility to be flexible, but queries, of course, are related to the size and number of options and some other criteria. And of course, payment also is related not to number of documents. It is related to some more complex metrics that we can use. Uh, uh, and we can see, sorry. Uh, attachments, yes, it is possible to have attachments to documents. We have stored procedures. Stored procedures are written in JavaScript and stored procedures are specific for each collection. If you need to have cross collection queries, it is not possible for now to be done via stored procedures, but you are able to access the context of collection using stored procedure. So, this is something that probably uh, like approach is uh, well known for those of you who have experience with other NoSQL uh, document-oriented uh, databases. In general, uh, there are triggers. Trigger means, of course, a uh, stored procedure that uh, is triggered when you have specific action, like creating document, editing document, deleting document, for example. Uh, User-defined function. User-defined function means JavaScript function that is not related to the context of specific collection. That means we will show a little bit later JavaScript functions with input parameters and output, just to calculate, for example, something. So, uh, indexing is something that uh, we will see a little bit later and uh, you can search, of course, uh, using these options where you have indexing. Otherwise, you, you know uh, if you have no indexing, that means you will have very, very low consuming operations. So, if we have uh, some uh, <coughs> documents, 
in this way, you are able to find the specific document, of course, using uh, uh, indexing that uh, is very, very similar, like logic, to uh, approach that you know for SQL Server. You have copy of your data, and of course, you have uh, uh, ordering of these uh, values regarding to uh, specific rules. So, uh, because I have a lot of information about indexing that is not so uh, important, I will go forward with user-defined functions. User-defined functions uh, are also related from another side to specific collection. It is something that you need to consider. If you have stored procedure or function or trigger, anytime it is related to collection. For each collection, you need to create separate stored procedure and function. Well, we will see uh, tires a little bit later. Initially, uh, tires was with fixed size, now we have uh, much more flexible options. But uh, let's see some additional things. You need to have uh, metadata that uh, you will use in your, uh, with your documents and uh, you have uh, <coughs> some generated fields or uh, generated properties uh, in each document. Resource ID, uh, ETAC, by the way, do you know what is ETAC? It is not from document DB. It is in general uh, uh, term that is used when you have a concurrent request, optimistic request, and uh, yes, uh, you need to, uh, uh, to know if uh, uh, you have a request and somebody else uh, also is uh, uh, trying to change this document, for example. When you have concurrent requests, this ETAC, you can make, uh, of course, a reference check, is uh, one of the approach that is used for many, many solutions. So, uh, if you have REST interface, uh, if you use a REST interface, you will have this kind of structure that you see on the slides. Later we will see also examples with this. Uh, so, performance levels. What means performance levels? That means that uh, we need uh, sometimes to relate uh, performance regarding to throughput for this solution with a specific tar. And also, there is one foggy term, uh, foggy term a request unit that uh, is related to this uh, request unit. It is almost the same like with Azure SQL database when you need to uh, evaluate the performance of Azure uh, SQL database. What is the unit that you use? DTU? Okay, DTU is also uh, not very well described. You know this. So uh, here, descrip uh, description is a little bit beta better, uh, but uh, also it could be changed. Well, request unit represents, as uh, it is mentioned here, well, uh, processing capacity for one document with one K, uh, if you have no more than 10 unique properties. For our experience, usually, for IoT solutions, in, in our IoT solutions, because, uh, of course, uh, it could be different, we have, for one request, average 17 request units. So, uh, this is something that you can check, of course, when you have queries, uh, even on the website, it is possible to see uh, how much request units for specific query is used, 
by the way, it is something that is realized uh, very complex with machine learning internally to calculate any time uh, how, how many request units uh, you need. So, SDKs. Uh, those of you who have experience with DocumentDB, uh, probably you have uh, experience with .NET SDK. Okay, because yes, uh, uh, these five uh, <coughs> platforms are supported officially, and there are a lot of unofficial implementation for uh, other platforms, even for, for example, iOS. And yes. Uh, but uh, Microsoft officially uh, works on uh, these five. .NET, Node.js, Java, JavaScript, and Python. And, uh, of course, for everything else, you can create own uh, SDK using REST API. So, there are some limitations for documents that can be changed. I mean that uh, you have uh, a limitation about the number of procedure trigger, triggers and uh, <coughs> user-defined function. This is because uh, Microsoft wants to uh, have a, a vision about uh, how customers use uh, this service. We had this case with li a limitation of the resources and it is solved using uh, a standard approach request to the help desk and uh, they can increase your uh, limit. The approach is related to a uh, uh, possibility a customer to not use in the proper way uh, uh, requests, to, to not, to not uh, construct in the proper way requests, and they can give some recommendations if uh, it is possible to simplify. And uh, of course, if you have reasonable uh, uh, purpose to have uh, more uh, number of specific uh, uh, actions or specific uh, things, yes, uh, they will increase your quota. That is something that, of course, uh, you can do and it is not strict limitation that uh, uh, need to uh, be uh, stressful for you. So, everything that uh, you can use is, of course, uh, asynchronous. About the documents, there is nothing specific. You have a uh, uh, different identifier internally, RID, that I showed uh, a little bit earlier, and, uh, of course, key that you can use uh, like identifier from the development point of view for this. For most of samples, uh, <coughs> we, uh, we will uh, have demos, of course, how we can create a new database, how we can uh, create a document, how we can create, of course, collection, Etc. Etc. It is something that uh, uh, needs. If we need, uh, if we want to go deeper, uh, specific session probably only for uh, part of the queries. So uh, also you uh, can have uh, some uh, insights about SQL syntax. SQL syntax is uh, from one side uh, very very. Uh, uh, easier to, under to be uh, understand it, but from another side, it is just limited set of uh, SQL that uh, you know. Uh, I mean that you can be able to have, uh, of course, main crude operations, but you have uh, joints only to have projection of the specific document. That means you are not able to make joints between uh, different uh, documents based on the specific logic. It is like self-join. 
there is also a limitation that can be changed. I mean that uh, uh, by default you have, uh, for example, two joints, but if you have uh, bigger uh, documents with hierarchical structure and you need to have uh, some specific projection, of course you can send request this quota to be increased. And of course we have example that we see a little bit later. There is also uh, some simple uh, tool that you can uh, use, so named document explorer. And in this document explorer, you can see different uh, uh, different set of queries. Also, you can download from GitHub uh, document DB Studio. It is an uh, open source tool that uh, give you opportunity to uh, make more complex uh, maintenance of document DB. And because it is open source, of course you can be able to take a look at all details related to queries, how to manage these uh, documents. About user-defined functions, here is just a simple example. It is 100% uh, identical with uh, JavaScript functions. Uh, and, uh, of course, I will show you later if you have time. Uh, you are able to have uh, uh, different, uh, different functions uh, with specific uh, purposes. When you need to uh, implement uh, something that needs uh, operation that is not supported from document DB uh, for the current state, you are able, uh, like this one, to use uh, uh, user-defined function. Here is the function and here is the implementation. Just this, in, uh, this part uh, UDF contains is uh, part of your SQL statement. So, let's continue. About stored procedures, stored procedures are again uh, JavaScript functions, but you have out of the box uh, possibility to get the context. That means to have access to all already uh, created resources in your collection and you uh, if you uh, use this uh, method get context you are able to get the context and to get collections and to get everything that is inside the collection so uh, triggers are of course two times pre triggers and post triggers and you are able before or at art after specific act action to uh, trigger uh, these functions. I will go forward to be possible to have enough time for everything. Uh, just continue. Well, transactions. Uh, transactions are supported on the stored procedures level. That means all your uh, stored procedures including, of course, implementation for uh, triggering, are in transaction mode. And if you have uh, uh, more complex uh, uh, queries in your uh, stored procedures, of course, it will be supported, everything to be uh, successfully completed, or you will have a rollback and it is uh, transparent. I mean that you are not uh, in charge of this support. So, uh, about .NET SDK, I have several examples. We will uh, do this uh, at the end of this presentation, but uh, the most important is that uh, you have, of course, authentication and you need to have endpoint, of course, and uh, uh, key, authorization key. How we can use this, we will see a little bit later. It is uh, 
possible to make it in several times with AD key and with rest. So, my suggestion is to do demos at the end because uh, I have a little bit more content. I will skip part of the content to be uh, on time at the end. Just uh, demos can be uh, more uh, related with different specific things. Uh, sharding. Do you have experience in general with sharding? Probably yes, with SQL Server. So uh, about document DB, we have a similar approach. And initially, Microsoft offered as part of the ASD key uh, possibility to organize sharding on the client side. That means your, uh, the, the whole logic of the sharding is in your application. Uh, it is not on the database level. And it was something that is not very convenient because in all cases you have some data transfer, of course. Uh, but from another side, we have, uh, of course, more flexibility uh, regarding to, to logic. All partitioning uh, that you can implement are very similar uh, to the approaches that you have for the SQL Server. That means you have uh, range partitioning, lookup partitioning, uh, some more complex uh, range lookup partitioning, and you have requests that uh, are uh, not related, can be not related to your specific sharding. That means you have fan out operations, you can have a request that is not related to specific partition. The case will be what you think, what is good and what is not good. Uh, let's let's uh, try to repeat. It was something that uh, uh, I just asked to see if it is clear for you or not. We have partitioning. Well, partitioning is implement, can be implemented in different way. We are able to have uh, specific classes, partition providers, and uh, uh, when we have requests against database, requests can be uh, related to specific shard, but also can be not related to specific shard. If requests are not related to specific shard, we have so named FANA operation. That means you have requests against the whole database and you will uh, receive what you are looking for uh, in this approach. Do you think that uh, there are some uh, issues and concerns? You might not think that well, side. well, uh, the case is that you uh, will have a more time-consuming operation. Be uh, and from the performance point of view, it is, of course, not the best approach. We will, uh, we will consider this regarding to the uh, last part of the presentation with uh, some recommendation. Uh, as mentioned, there are a set of classes partition resolvers that are provided from the ASD key to be possible to work with a client-side partitioning. That means uh, uh, you have base operations and uh, regarding to different kinds of partitioning and you are able also to inherit some of classes to provide own partitioning if you need uh, something more specific. So uh, the case is from one side performance and from another side also uh, data transfer because if you have a solution where in the, for example, middle tar is this logic, doesn't matter that this middle tar is somewhere in the cloud. You will have a data transfer between uh, document DB service and your uh, middle tar. So that is 
the case really that you need to consider. From another side, uh, we are flexible. From the first uh, solutions that we implemented, it was the approach that we used because 10 gigs is not so much data. So, about the performance. There are two different things that we will see at the examples also. There are uh, two modes when you have collection, a connection. Connection that is gateway mode, that means you have common access point and uh, document DB service will decide how, uh, how to get data from specific collection and direct mode when you are able to uh, make connection against specific collection or SSD disk. Of course, it is faster, but needs to be uh, with more consideration because you need to know, of course, structure of uh, um, and partitioning of your data. So, direct connection, of course, is uh, better for uh, from the performance point of view. Uh, using .NET SDK, from one side it is quite simple, from another side most of uh, samples are not focused on this. And when you start uh, to work with document DB and measure timing uh, when you do some operations, you, it is possible to have no connection mode direct and, of course, uh, to not uh, use TCP protocol. By default, it is HTTP. In general, it is good, but from the performance point of view, it is not so good. There is um, probably not a very good schema that explains gateway mode and uh, also direct connection mode. Also, uh, well, networking as uh, for each service is important. That means uh, if you have uh, Azure database from for specific region, well, uh, you need to consider if you have uh, clients from different regions, um, of course, to have connection uh, to the database in the same region, or to have, of course. Uh, uh, geo redundancy. Well, it is also possible to uh, increase uh, the speed and performance, of course, to cache the links that you have for self link. It is behind uh, this schema uh, shows uh, what is behind the self link. It is just part of the URL from the REST interface. And uh, otherwise, if you use self-link, request will go to the service. Service will find the same uh, part of the URL and uh, will return it internally. Well, you will have more requests and additional computing to do that. Well, real life cases, because uh, usually when I'm trying to talk about specific technology, uh, it is fair and more confident, of course, if you uh, explain about good and not so good parts. Well, uh, from one side, uh, we use this solution for Internet of Things systems, but you need to consider one very, very important thing. Document DB and document oriented databases are not the best solution from the price perspective if you need to store huge amount of data. Doesn't matter how you consider it and uh, what you can uh, see in the marketing materials. We did comparison also with uh, other services from the competitors and yes, for all competitors, uh, the price is similar for the solutions where you have uh, software as a service. I mean that uh, uh, you have implemented database engine uh, not on the infrastructure level. And uh, it is a little bit cheaper than 
uh, relational databases why, uh, uh, implemented uh, in the same way like Azure SQL database but not so cheap like uh, simple NoSQL storages like uh, table storage for example so if you need to collect data just to collect data and uh, run probably several times in year some complex analysis uh, document DB is not for this purpose so uh, there are some details but uh, it is because uh, I just uh, uh, wanted to explain real-life samples yes we started to collect data in document DB and it was not so successful document DB can be used like solution uh, instead SQL database because collecting of uh, data that need to be uh, processed somehow if you have a lot of analysis for the part of data uh, can be in some cases uh, better using document oriented databases but it is not the best solution as I mentioned if you need to store data that is uh, not operational data I mean something that is closer to the sto cold storage you know what is cold storage so uh, please consider this it is not just for storage it is too expensive uh, so if you if you have number a big number of uh, uh, requests it could be also under consideration uh, what is the performance here are some examples uh, well uh, but in reality it looks like if we have uh, some uh, document DB solutions you can see here uh, some metrics you have uh, several request units uh, for specific JSON document if you have a lot of clients that send some information some sensors that send uh, some information well you have limitation regarding to the TAR you have limitation on the standard TARs and we will see a little bit later also partitioned collections and uh, these requests are per second if you have not so small documents with 30 request units for example that means you are not able for the uh, second uh, TAR to have more than 30 requests at the same time what happens in this case you need to have of course uh, additional partitioning for this that means more collections that means several times more expensive solution well it is something that was a big issue in the beginning and uh, that is the reason uh, also there are just some some metrics uh, that was the reason to consider that it is possible for similar solutions also to have um, some uh, additional options here are uh, comparison for example usually if you have document DB uh, the most inter interesting because I have a lot of content is if we can uh, compare it for example for the performance with uh, not a regis with SQL Server it seems that reality is a little bit stressful what means you are able if you have proper tuning to have up to three times uh, faster inserts but if we have no tuning it, it is possible to have relative the same performance like Azure SQL database so you need to consider this from another side uh, if you have uh, a lot of selects in general after some tests it seems that SQL Server 
uh, Azure SQL database can be a little bit uh, faster average. So, why we need to use document DB? If you have solutions where inserts are uh, critical, document DB is better. And if you need to have in on operational uh, data uh, analysis that requires uh, relative fast selects, it could be not a bad solution. But if you have uh, not so often uh, processing on this data, it will be uh, too expensive. Well, regarding to the issues with uh, throughput, Microsoft change a little bit the policy. What means this? That means that they split uh, these two things, size and throughput. And they also offered, offered uh, so-named ser uh, server-side sharding collections or elastic collections. There are unfortunate, fortunately or unfortunately changes an REST API, that means uh, applications that are created using requests from the lower level until end of the last year need to be redesigned because there are some changes in the REST API. Uh, interesting. I think. Yes. What about performance levels, new performance levels? Uh, new performance levels uh, give you a possibility to have, by default, up to 250 gigabytes sharded collections, but on the server side. You don't need to care on sharding. Sounds perfect. Reality is not so perfect. What means that? Uh, for now, it is partially implemented. Uh, what means partially implemented, of course? That means uh, that you have these sharded collections, but it is not possible these sharded collections to be with uh, less than 250 gigs at the moment. So uh, it will be possible in Q4, but for now, you just create sharded collection, and it is collection with 25 SSDs. That means just if you have a need to have a <coughs> flexible collection with a smaller size of data, it is very expensive solution. So uh, if you consider to use this feature, probably uh, you need to wait until Q4. Uh, I will show you now examples. We have five to ten minutes. Uh, also, there is something for people who already have uh, implementations over MongoDB. You are able to use the same code for using DocumentDB. That means you have no need to make uh, to make uh, changes or almost without changes, you are able to move your solutions uh, with MongoDB to DocumentDB as storage. So, uh, let's see after these things because I have a little bit more details about uh, elastic collections. Uh, Usually, when you have an uh, elastic collection or server-side sharded collection, you have two things. The first thing is, of course, the resource of this collection. And the second, that you can guess, doesn't matter if you have experience with this solution or not, you need to have partition key. So you need to set this partition key when you create this collection, something like this. Uh, so. This is a uh, sample request. We will see a little bit later. And uh, let's see some samples, if we have time.
So first sample, if it works, yes, it is uh, how you can use on the lower level REST API. Uh, you are able, of course, I will change the size. You are able to uh, to have a request auto auto authorization is a little bit uh, more tricky. It is uh, something that uh, needs to be um, considered. I mean that without example, uh, for me it was not very. Uh, um, easy to make this, but we have, let's go to Azure portal, so we have several collections that we can use. By the way, uh, for those of you who has no experience with DocumentDB, unfortunately, management of uh, DocumentDB uh, solutions is possible only using uh, the new portal. So uh, it is something that uh, is not specific. I will go. Uh, to the solution, you need to uh, create firstly account if you have no account is related uh, to uh, also logical level, and you have uh, you can have many databases, and in each database, of course, you are able to have uh, to have uh, mm, many collections. So let's go to. Probably resource group, and I will check different action. Okay, we have sample database. We have several collections. And it is possible of course to browse the documents uh, well it, it will be not uh, uh, quite fast if you if you have uh, a lot of documents it is of course uh, sample to show you that we have uh, uh, information in this database so uh, This is simple uh, demo where you can have a uh, uh, possibility to see uh, the returned information after a REST request. We have a simple document. We have information about uh, collections and uh, the whole database. Well, it is, of course, not very natural. It is just to show you that it is possible. Uh, but we have uh, one application. It is desktop application that is uh, related to different options, how to create collection, uh, how to uh, make some queries, and how to... Uh, delete document, of course. Usually I, I added some information about uh, uh, some logic to check if it is already um, created. I mean collection, of course. 
I created document, I can delete document, I can delete the collection. What is, uh, let's increase it by size. Here is uh, uh, the code that I already show you with connection mode and protocol. Of course, you can be able to create uh, any resource using API. Well, uh, of course, in using .NET uh, uh, SDK, I'm checking if uh, uh, the specific resource is existing. Of course, usually in your queries, uh, as I already mentioned, we have this collection, uh, this self-link that uh, can be, of course, with different name uh, for specific resources. And uh, it is quite easy that, uh, of course, link is, is supported in this uh, in this example, we create partition collection, and this partition collection, uh, of course, uh, contains this uh, partition key, region uh, ID. So uh, after that, we can uh, create documents in this collection. When we need to uh, delete collection, it is quite simple. We are all we are able to delete uh, collection sim uh, <coughs> specific uh, with fixed size and also uh, sharded collection very simple in the same way. So that is the example. Let's just create. A, let's uh, just uh, check. I think that we have this sharded collection in, in this database, probably. It takes a little bit more time sometimes uh, when you have a uh, sharded collection to uh, receive uh, all data. It is uh, because you have actually 20 five um, simple collection behind the behind the stage uh, probably probably we need to wait a little bit more so uh, we are uh, at the end of the presentation it seems that uh, we have no more time so uh, I will uh, stop with this demo hope that uh, Hmm. I'm not sure, probably because of the connection also, if it is not very good or it just takes too much time, uh, we need to wait to see the result. Probably it will be too long for this session. Uh, do you have any questions? And uh, one, is there aggregation function for this document in the Yes, uh, already aggregation functions are supported. Um, document DB uh, team has uh, regular small uh, releases each two weeks uh, because they work using Scrum, of course. <laughs> As you can guess, uh, things like, uh, yes, Zoom, Average, uh, this kind of aggregation functions are supported and they continue to add uh, such kind of functions. If you have no specific function, it is possible to consider to use uh, stored, procedures. Sto stored procedures, or if it is possible and simple, it is possible also to use user-defined function. Of course, if you have aggregation, uh, user-defined function is uh, not uh, applicable because you need to collect uh, all data, but yes. Stored procedure is alternative to do that. Okay, and uh, one more. You said there is some kind of attachments to documents. Uh, are these attachments uh, like another part of the document, and is it stored in the same uh, space as the document collection? Like, 
does it consume the same storage limitation for a collection? Uh, you, you mean, for example, if you have image or something like this, if it is related to the size of the, yes, it is, it is related to the size of the collection, but uh, internally, how it is organized uh, on the lower level, actually, I cannot uh, give you answer yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your speech. Uh, I have a question about uh, UDFs, procedures, uh, yeah. and etc. Uh, uh, is any easy way to debug the JavaScript functions? Uh, well, <laughs> it is a, a very um, sensitive uh, question because we have internal uh, uh, discussion about this. Uh, it is not easy. Why it is not easy? Because uh, for now, uh, there is no possibility to have uh, debugging on the server side. And from another side, uh, there is no uh, <coughs> simulator for document DB. Uh, it is uh, something that is requested, but because uh, document DB use uh, very different other services, uh, it will be mm, not so easy to be uh, implemented. Uh, probably in the near future, it will be possible to have a server side debug, but for now, uh, for now not. And it is good to not expect uh, soon anything related to simulator. Probably it will be not possible. Thank you. Uh, one more question: uh, Is it possible to run uh, locally an instance of this? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, there was discussions about uh, yes, de how developers uh, will be able uh, simple to uh, develop solutions with document DB and debug it well. Uh, and there were discussions, one, uh, one was related to options to have simulator, another uh, for uh, option to run on premises this. Well, on premises and simulator, like cases are very similar. I mean that uh, uh, document DB is designed initially too complex. As I mentioned, it works uh, uh, together with some services like uh, uh, machine learning uh, to calculate uh, some metrics and uh, uh, probably, but I cannot of course promise, but probably uh, regarding to some discussions, the, uh, the most uh, achievable options will be if uh, Microsoft uh, offer specific development accounts uh, uh, where you can be able cheaper to use uh, these resources only for development. But yes, it, it is a big issue. Uh, you are able uh, to uh, debug your uh, customer code, but uh, uh, regarding to um, problems uh, with uh, uh, server side, with backend, it is uh, very, very difficult because uh, you are not uh, in control when something happens. For example, if uh, you have uh, uh, throughput that uh, is uh, m uh, m more than the limit of your tar, uh, there is uh, uh, throttling. And for example, uh, it, it, this will be the first thing uh, when you have uh, uh, development with uh, uh, more data that you can see and it will be difficult to consider uh, what happens. It is possible if you uh, uh, go deeper and uh, see the codes on the, in the REST API for specific request to uh, see the uh, response and in response usually you have uh, information about uh, uh, the case, of course, 
it depends because in the documentation there are uh, information about well if you if you receive a specific error uh, what is the case of course but yes it is uh, a big issue that uh, you are not able easy to find the case usually uh, what happens when we have a very specific uh, behavior we are asking uh, document db team because they have uh, also internal logging so they will help you in general uh, it is something that uh, need to be developed somehow for now it is a specific uh, issue yes you, you need to have some experience to be possible for some solutions uh, easy to understand uh, something that uh, cannot be debugged uh, like uh, behavior uh, uh, why is based on this or that yeah <coughs> but uh, your questions are very reasonable yes the main cases when you work with document db is mostly uh, that you have not a local simulator and sometimes it is difficult to find uh, uh, approach how to debug uh, yeah. your request yeah. Uh, and one, one more question. Uh, you told that um, there are support of AC transactions inside this database. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to, for example, insert uh, in one transactions in both collections, uh, records in both collections? Uh, actually not. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, any uh, stored procedure is related to specific collection. Well, uh, implementation with uh, sharded collection is uh, different. Uh, there on the uh, server side, it is possible to support uh, uh, resources. Uh, I mean that for new sharded collections, it is possible to use in one transaction, work with different uh, shards or different uh, small collections but uh, if you have not this situation it is not possible i mean for different collections it is not possible to have a, a transaction code that uh, uh, can be executed because each store procedure is tightly related to specific collection this means that uh, you can open transaction on client side uh, in from from the .NET code to well uh, you you need to implement if you need to have more collection you need to implement uh, similar logic yes on the uh, client uh, uh, level or middle tar if uh, of course you have multi tar uh, solution yes and you need to support uh, this if you need to have this logic a collection by collection but uh, it is not uh, out of the box solution for now okay uh, as i understand uh, from uh, all these facts uh, i understand that this is a uh, rest around the database engine it um, uh, developer need to think in terms of rest uh, to yeah. make some atomic operations add one entity load one entity and something or not or this is not a conception uh well uh if you if you have a uh, uh, mm, situation where you need to uh, ac uh, access different resources yes each resource need to be in a separate request but uh, in the uh, scope of collection you can you can manage different things so uh, that is the limitation for now actually I, I believe regarding to my developer experience and uh, probably uh, all of us can say that uh, yes uh, in general it is doable uh, to be implemented if uh, Microsoft decide, I mean that uh, they can do this in the future, just uh, from the technical point of view, uh, to have uh, uh, this kind of transactions, but for now not. 
Okay. Also, also uh, some, some things that uh, uh, probably we can expect soon regarding to uh, this uh, uh, new policy to uh, change the size and uh, the throughput separately because it was one of the main issues regarding to the price. You need to have uh, uh, more uh, data that, uh, to keep more data. That means sometimes uh, that you need just to have uh, cheaper data. For uh, uh, Until built, it was not possible. And uh, probably we can expect cold storage. That means uh, to be possible uh, to have this functionality to move your data from operational storage, that means uh, uh, document DB, to some cheaper storage. Until now, we do it uh, programmatically uh, in our implementation, uh, uh, not out of the box. I mean that it is not something that uh, is supported until now. But probably we can expect some similar solution. That means uh, you, you have uh, uh, <coughs> data. Well, uh, probably your operational data is for three months or six months or year, but you need to collect all data. Probably you can quite easy soon to move older data in uh, cheaper storage and to move it back when uh, uh, you need to do some analysis. And after that, to uh, to push it back on the cold storage. This is something like StageDB in the SQL Server. Uh, on, on well, well uh, I think not exactly. Uh, well, this uh, SQL Server moved to cloud, but uh, DocumentDB already yeah, in yeah. the cloud. It is, it, it is just uh, uh, related to performance and uh, functionalities and the price, of course. But everything is in the cloud, yeah. And uh, it is hidden for you. I understand, thank you. Welcome. More questions? I think it's time to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm too late. Uh, well, thank you for attention. Hope that uh, uh, this explanation was uh, useful for you. Uh, I tried to uh, be fair and to say uh, what is good and what is not good. It is a little bit uh, uh, too early to say that uh, uh, it is completed solution, but yes, it is more than a year uh, already in uh, general availability. That means, yes, it is possible to use it, just uh, you can expect more functionalities in the future. Thank you. Thank you.